Today, our star of the show is a man named Petr Pavlinsky, a man in Russia known to be a contemporary artist. However, his art is definitely unconventional and controversial, to say the least. It's usually in the form of performance art, and it's usually done in political protest. A lot of his performances involve a bit of nudity at the least, and some even fall into the category of self-mutilation. Now despite of, or maybe in thanks to, all of this strangeness, he is still known as a pretty important figure in Russian political activism. Our boy here was born in good old Leningrad in 1984. When it came time to go on to university, Pavlinsky ended up attending the St. Petersburg Art and Industry Academy, taking additional classes at the St. Petersburg Pro-Art Foundation for Culture and Arts, what a mouthful, during his last year. He didn't really fancy this schooling. He claimed that art schools were sucking the souls out of artists, turning them into, quote, servants. He left the school before he finished his courses. He began staging political protests, calling his peculiar brand of performance art his actions. The action that first brought Pevlinsky into mainstream media attention was his peculiar act of sewing his mouth shut. These images of Pevlinsky with his mouth sewn shut were showcased on news sites worldwide. However, people mainly gawked at the oddity and never really learned who he was or why he was sewing his mouth shut. That's what we're here to do. Well, the reason was, of course, protest. He was protesting the arrest and incarceration of several members of a band called Pussy Riot. Pussy Riot was a well-known band in Russia, mainly known for being controversial. It was a punk rock band that focused on feminist values and incorporated a lot of their own performance art into their performances. Somehow, the band avoided most legal trouble until their fateful performance at the Cathedral of Christ the Savior in Moscow in 2012. This particular performance was protesting the re-election of Vladimir Putin, something that's already pretty well known to be probably not the safest thing you can do in Russia. Although there was no church service going on at the time and only a few people were even out in the halls, the band entered the church, stripped off all their winter clothes, put on masks, and stepped up on stage, where they stood on the stairs leading toward the altar and began to jump around, punching the air. I'm unsure of what they really thought this would accomplish, but maybe I just don't understand performance art. They were caught by guards within minutes. Two members of the group were arrested on charges of hooliganism, but they denied even being members of the band in the first place and staged a hunger strike in protest. However, it didn't work, and they eventually ended up serving time in prison. Pavlinsky was, to say the least, inspired by their efforts and deeply offended by their arrests. Taking a page out of their book of political protesting, he decided to send his own little message. On July 23rd in 2012, Pavlinsky arrived at a different church, the Kazan Cathedral in St. Petersburg with his lips completely sewn shut. He was holding a banner that said, The action of Pussy Riot was a replica of the famous action of Jesus Christ. Matthew 21, 12-13. Let's take a look at what Matthew 21, verse 12-13 actually says, taken from the New International Version translation of the Bible. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. So Jesus didn't exactly run into a church and start hopping around like a madman, but yeah, I guess I can kind of see the similarities between the two. I mean, they're both protests inside of a church. But I really doubt Jesus really had much of an opinion on the re-election of Vladimir Putin. Police were called, but it seemed like they were actually more worried about Pavlinsky's mental state than anything else. Rather than arresting them, they actually called an ambulance and had him sent off for a psychiatric examination. Understandably. However, to the shock of many, he was found to be completely sane. He explained that he was simply highlighting a lack of regard for artists in modern-day Russia. 
He said that this was his way of making a gesture that would accurately reflect the situation. So yeah, you know, mouth sewn shut, freedom of speech, it's a pretty straightforward metaphor. The next year, on May 3rd in 2013, Pavlensky was at it again. Going against generally repressive government policies, mainly laws against homosexuality, censorship laws, and blasphemy laws, he held another action at the Legislative Assembly of St. Petersburg. His assistants brought him there, completely naked and wrapped in what was virtually a multi-layered onion of barbed wire. He was placed at the main entrance of the building, where he remained silent and motionless, half bent over inside the barbed wire cocoon. He ignored his surroundings and didn't react to anyone until the police finally showed up and removed him from the mesh wire using garden clippers. Pavlensky's colleagues mentioned that this completed the metaphor he was going for, police finally freeing him from his oppressive barbed wire cage. This performance awarded Pavlinsky the Alternative Prize for Russian Activist Art in the category of Actions Implemented in Urban Space in 2013. In the end, it's not clear if this performance really accomplished much, but at least he can walk away with a prize for what was surely an uncomfortable afternoon. Again in November, the world was blessed with another one of Pavlinsky's actions. This is what you came for, one of the most strange, confusing, painful acts of performance art, political protest in history. Pavlinsky headed over to the legendary Lenin's Mausoleum on the Red Square in Moscow. You may be more familiar with the informal title of this building, Lenin's Tomb. This is where the widely revered Vladimir Lenin's dead body is maintained and kept on display in, what appears to be, pristine condition. Needless to say, this place is a big deal to both the Russian government and to the many millions of tourists who have come to see the spectacle of a legendary communist figure in suspended animation over the decades. Likely to make as big of an impression as possible, Pavlinsky chose this area for his next action, during the annual holiday Russian Police Day. In the freezing cold weather during the harsh Russian winter, he stripped naked and positioned himself on the freezing, cold, frosty stone pavement in front of the mausoleum, where he then sat on the ground. He grabbed a long nail he had brought with him, along with a small hammer. Going against all instinct as a human being, he placed the tip of the nail into his genitals, where he then took a hammer and bonk, slammed it straight through his scrotum and into the ground. Tourists surrounded him, gasping, gawking, and understandably freaking the f out. Police were called to the scene, where they ordered Pavlinsky to get up. However, he could not, as his scrotum was now affixed to the ground. Not sure what to do, the police wrapped the freezing cold, seemingly emaciated Pavlinsky in a blanket. As they fiddled with the problem at hand, Eventually, the police removed the nail and, in tandem, his genitalia from the stone and once again sent Pavlinsky off to the hospital. Now, I can't show the uncensored photos of the incident here, obviously, but for the sake of research, I did take a look at the damage. It appears to me that the nail wasn't driven through either of the testicles themselves, but rather the skin between them, which is probably substantially less painful and might be easier to fix but still not an ideal situation in any world. Then, he used the flat top part of the nail to prop his wiener up, like, uh, like it's on a little pedestal. I'm just reporting the facts. He was discharged later that evening, actually without charge, despite what he had done. I'm sure most people were thinking, I guess jumping up and down in a church is punishable by prison time, but public nudity along with mutilation out in the open in front of a landmark is okay. Or not. As the police came back a few weeks later and decided to arrest him after all, opening a case of hooliganism motivated by hatred of a particular social, ethnic, or religious group. Basically via the exact same law that they used against Pussy Riot in the previous incident. When asked why he decided to become a testicular carpenter, Pavlinsky told the media, a naked artist, looking at his testicles nailed to the cobblestone, is a metaphor of apathy, political indifference, and the fatalism of Russian society. 
Pavlinsky was actually happy to be questioned by police. In his mind, the possibility of being arrested would just kind of prove his point about the lack of freedom of speech and expression. If the police were to arrest him, it would kind of complete the performance. You know, icing on the cake. Despite being questioned, however, he didn't get arrested. Despite this being his most well-known protest for obvious reasons, Pavlinsky continued to engage in ridiculous spectacles while performing his actions across Russia. In 2014, he and his friends built a makeshift barricade along a bridge in St. Petersburg in support of the Ukrainian Revolution, where they burned tires and played drums. He was swiftly arrested once again and charged with vandalism. Later that year, he sat naked on the roof of the Serbsky Center, a psychiatric hospital, and cut off his earlobe with a chef's knife in protest of political abuse involving psychiatric hospitals. By this point in his life, everyone was so used to his antics that stripping naked on top of a hospital and chopping his ear up only garnered him an additional one sentence on his Wikipedia biography. In 2015, in protest of a filmmaker named Oleg Sentsov's incarceration, Pavlinsky doused the entrance of the headquarters of the Russian Federal Security Service in gasoline and lit the gates on fire with a cigarette lighter, trying to imply that they were the gates of hell in another obvious metaphor. The doors were partially burned and Pavlinsky was arrested within one minute on charges of debauchery. He was once again also charged with vandalism. He was held in a psychiatric ward for weeks, before eventually going off to jail for seven months, awaiting trial. He was ordered to pay a 500,000 ruble fine, which is about 6,700 US dollars, but he never paid. Come on. Pavlinsky's life soon went to hell. He, along with his girlfriend Oksana, were accused of sexual assault and threats by a young actress in the theater scene. Pavlinsky denied the accusations and claimed the accusations to be politically motivated, which isn't baseless. Similar accusations have happened against other frequent Russian protesters in the past. He, Oksana, and their children were forced to flee to France, where they luckily received asylum in 2017. However, don't assume that his life calmed down after arriving in France. Later that year, Pavlinsky was once again arrested, in France this time, after setting fire to some windows of an office of the Bank of France in Paris. He and Oksana were charged with property damage, with Pavlinsky receiving another stay in a psychiatric unit until being imprisoned once more. The two ended up spending a little more than a year in prison, and were ultimately ordered to pay over 20,000 euros in fines. In 2020, Pavlinsky decided to take his antics to the internet. He aimed to expose hypocritical politicians who try to impose ultra-conservative sexual values on society while not practicing those values themselves. He found and uploaded videos of certain politicians performing indecent acts on camera. He uploaded a video of a former government minister performing happy hand time on himself and ended up facing legal trouble. So where is Petr Pavlinsky now? Well, for one, he and Oksana broke up, and it wasn't a clean break, exactly. She ended up writing a book on her experiences being with him over the years. She recounted years of severe physical and sexual abuse at his hands. At a New Year's party in 2020, Pavlinsky stabbed two people in a Paris apartment and was subsequently arrested. Many people in France are calling upon the government to revoke his asylum, for obvious reasons, which is becoming a possibility. Pavlinsky has said that, if that happens, he simply plans to flee to a different country in Europe. So what will he do next? Well, nobody really knows, of course, but rest assured it will probably involve either nudity and or fire. Once again, thank you for watching my video. I got a pretty big jump in subs the other day that I honestly would have never seen coming. So thank you, everybody. I'm happy to have you here. If you don't mind dropping a like, it really helps. I mean, if you want. Subscribe too, if you like this stuff. I talk about stuff all the time. See you later.